and welcome to Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point. I just pray that you guys all had a great Thanksgiving with your loved ones. And as we move into this next holiday season, let's just not get caught up in the hustle and bustle and just forget all the things that we've learned to be thankful in all situations. And let us always remember what God tells us in Proverbs 3, 3 through 6. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not in on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So if you just join me in prayer this morning, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for your love and faithfulness. You are always loving and kind and merciful towards us. And let us write that on the tablet of our heart to be loving and faithful to you. We will never let our faithfulness end. And we will trust in you, God. In all that's going on in our lives, we will put all of our trust in you. And you will make our paths straight. So we thank you for your guidance, guiding we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercifulness. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, so let's just pass it on to our worship team who is going to continue to usher us into his presence. Greetings, family and friends. Uh, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. As we um, as we go through the season, um, I would still like to give thanks. Um, uh, the song, the song that I'm gonna do is called "Thank You God for Saving Me." So, um, or just a reminder that we should always, always give thanks every day, not just Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, here we go.
Pass it over to Pastor Mark. John, take it away, see. Hey, thank you, Danny. Thank you for that awesome worship song to welcome us into today's service. Welcome, everybody. Hope Chapel Pro West, all of our family, all of our friends, all of you, our visitors, just decided to join us today for our Sunday service. We welcome you all with the love of Christ. You know, we have just went through our Thanksgiving weekend, and we're still in Thanksgiving weekend, and we're entering into the season of Advent. A time when we have anticipation and excitement about the coming of Christ. But also at this time, there's a lot of anxiety, as we know, within our, our world. Uh, people are worried about finances. People are worried about, you know, being able to get what they want. And it's just, just a lot of stress. And we want to let you folks know here, out there that we here at Hope Chapel Pro West are here for you. That whatever your issues may be, whatever it is that is, that is concerning your heart, whatever is weighing you down, please reach out to us. You can reach out to us through our, our, in, our info line at our website, uh, email us, you could text us, we can go ahead and pray for you. Uh, we've been seeing actually a lot of response to our uh, Facebook page, and so that's awesome. That's awesome that you folks are doing that. You can also reach out to us by joining our small groups, and we have many different small groups that happen throughout the week. You can check out the information in the chat uh, to see what different types of groups we have on different days and what times they are. We encourage you folks to do that, to reach out, because it's only as a body of Christ that we can help each other stay connected and we can keep our hearts in tune with what it is it's supposed to be during this season and not this hustle and bustle that this culture has put us in. This is a season of giving. We know that. That's what our culture has taught us, but also this is what we know as believers in Christ. And so I want to take this moment too now to, to consider our giving of our offerings to Christ. And as you find it in your heart, certainly your heart for what it is that you would like to offer him. Let me go ahead and lead us in our offering prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives, all that you have given us, all that you have provided us, Lord. Uh, Lord, this is becoming a crazy season for us now, Lord. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to even have this season, Lord. But we know there's a lot of stress out there. We know there's uh, a lot of things on our hearts, Lord, and we pray that you settle us down, Lord, that you keep in our hearts and our minds that you are the giver of all that we have, Lord. And with that, Lord, we offer this, our, our what we have to you, Lord. We present this offering to you as, as our thank you and our uh, a sign of our faith in you. We ask that you bless this offering that we present to you, that you use it to further your kingdom here on earth, Lord. And allow your light to be shine, to shine brightly for all that have not seen you before, not do not know of you, so that all can feel your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. We pray that you continue to bless us and guide us and lead us, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. I would like to pass it over to Pastor James to continue our worship service. Pastor James. Thanks, C, and greetings, everyone. Welcome to Hope Chapel Pro West Freedom Point. Man, and it's just so awesome that you could join us today. I say this every week, but I want to say it again. Thank you. 
for trusting the Lord in us enough to say, hey, this is a safe place to receive God, to, to worship in the beauty of holiness in the safety of our own spaces. Now, I know that we've got people watching from all over the world, all over the globe. And so we just want to send greetings to you this, this afternoon, right? This morning, or it may be midnight where you are, but we just thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, I just love the worship song today. Can we just give the Lord a hand of praise for the worship song? That was amazing, Brother Danny. Just an amazing job. We thank God for that. And then the scripture that came from Sister Sherry as well, just how God is looking for our love and our faithfulness. But more importantly, he has provided love and faithfulness to each and every one of us. Do me a favor. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, if you are on Zoom, go ahead and put in the chat, wherever you are, let us know where you're worshiping from. And I want to give a huge shout out while you're doing this to our Freedom Point family in the Philippines. They have been lighting it up. And we just thank God for each and every one of you. We've got a few from, from London. And then, of course, I'm just thanking God for our family here on the island of Hawaii and, and uh, Oahu, excuse me. Uh, just awesome to have everyone joining with us as we worship the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Thanksgiving was, was amazing for many of us who celebrated it. And I want you to know that God is going to continue to be a faithful God, that we don't have to wait till once a year to say thank you, as Minister Cleo said, but we can say thank you every day. How about, come on, let's be engaging today. Why don't you put it in the chat and just say Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you, Lord, that you woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you've been great and marvelous. You've provided for me. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Yeah, it, it's just a time of that. And I, I don't like to rush through Thanksgiving and go in, into Christmas. And so this morning, we have an opportunity to close out our series, the series that we started a few months ago. We can also tie that in to the season of Thanksgiving and also ushering us in to what this new season will bring, which is honoring the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to do. And if you would just allow me the series we started in a few months ago was Tools for the Journey, coming out of 2 Peter 1 and 3. And the whole series was about this. The Lord knows every challenge that lies ahead, every challenge, every circumstance, every situation, every calamity, every low point in our life, God he already knew that we were going to have these things, but the Lord has been constantly saying week after week after week, I've got you covered. I've got you covered. Remember, God is an all-knowing God, so this season, even that we find ourselves in right now, guess what? He already knew what was going to go on. He already knew what was going to happen, and he constantly said, I've got you covered. And, and so this is beautiful. So the series was just anchoring up on that truth that God's got us covered. And it was to provide us tips, a little wisdom, and more importantly, encouragement along the way. That's what God wanted us to capture in this, not only for this season, but this journey of the Christian life that we find ourselves on. We talked about many, many tools. We talked about anger and disappointment. We talked about anxiety and frustration. We talked about being impatient. And in the midst of all of those, God constantly gave us tools. He constantly gave us words of wisdom, not from PJ and not from Mark Chan, but, but the Lord gave us these things through his word. Remember, God is saying, I've got you covered. I, I need somebody to put that in the chat. I, I've got you covered. That's what the Lord is saying. God is saying, I've got you covered, no matter where you find yourself. And so we're going to close this series today 
We've talked about so many tools and so many things. And, and this, this week, as I was going through it and just being excited about just being in front of you today and delivering a word of, of encouragement, a word of hope, let me tell you what I landed on. Being thankful for the friends that we have along the way. And that's what we're going to talk about today because God knew we would need friends. Can, can somebody put that in the chat? God knew that we would need friends, friends that, that wouldn't allow us to, to navigate life by ourselves, friends who would, who would allow us to just be free to be who we are, friends who would draw out the best in us. Friends that would lift us up when we're in our low places to tell us and let us know that we can make it. Friends that would take on the challenges with us and not just stand on the sideline and watch things go down, but they would get in there with you, get their hands dirty. Come on, put their hands to the tools and work it with you. Friends who, who say, listen, you can be who you are, and I'm going to love you right where you find yourself, but I love you enough not to leave you there, but I'm going to continue to challenge you, encourage you, pray for you, but I'm going to do it right with you. I say again, God knew we would need friends, especially in the times that we find ourselves. You know, the Bible is riddled with friendship relationships. All throughout the Bible, we see friends throughout. We talk about Paul and Silas and Esther and Mordecai, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, so many of them, David and, and Jonathan, Aaron and Moses, and we could go on and on. And some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, PJ, they, they were not friends at all, but, but just hold on. It's about the relationship and what was going on and what was happening. What am I saying? God knew we would need friends. And so even in that, Solomon, the most wisest man on the earth, he even had something to say about friends. He says, you don't have to do this thing together. You know, I mean, you don't have to do it by yourself, but you need to do it together. What was he saying? Two people are better together, for they can help one another to succeed. If one of us falls, guess what? The other one can reach out and help us back up. We don't have to do it by ourselves. All we need is a friend. He goes on and says this, a person standing alone can be attacked, can be defeated, can be taken out. But listen, I just love this. He says, but two can stand how? Back to back. I mean, back to back. You get one side and I'll get the other side. You protect this side and I will protect this side. He's saying that if they get there and they do it together, they will be able to conquer anything that's coming their way. And then he goes on to says, hey, you don't only have to have one friend, you can have many. He says three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. I'm saying again this morning, I thank God for God, for he knew we would need friends along the way. Now he did go on and he said this too. He says, listen, it's almost like iron that sharpens iron. So a friend sharpens another friend. I'm going to go back to it. The, the, the friend that we have a lot of times is, is drawing out the best in us, allowing us to, to see things that we really don't see that's within ourselves. Had we not had that type of friend, we might be end up in a ditch somewhere. But because we have friends, listen, they see what we don't see. They are there to nudge us and to spur us on and to tell us, you can make it. You can do it. You've got this. You can go for it. And then they say, guess what? And I'm right there with you. And we're going to do this thing together. God knew we needed friends. Oh, I love it. And then he says this, we needed a friend, you know, in those times where we mess up. We need friends in those times when we don't say the right things, when we don't do the right things, when we don't 
act the right way. We need friends that will love us at all times, no matter what's going on, right? It's almost like a mother's love. You can mess up, you can tear up, you can lie, you can cheat, you can steal, you can burn the house down, but the mother will still love you. That's just the way a friend is. A friend is going to love at all times. These are things that Solomon laid out and he wanted us to understand. And I want to clarify one more time, friendship transcends all other relationships. I'll say it again, friendships transcends all other relationships. What do I mean by that? I'm saying that within the, the relationships itself, friends continue to evolve. They emerge in these relationships. What am I talking about? Well, on this schematic, you can kind of see it. And I believe that in every area of our life, we can say, yeah, I, I still got some school-age friends. I've got some friends that I went to college with. I I've got friends even right now in the workplace. You know, some of my neighbors are my friends. You know, the things that I like to do, hobbies, I, I birth friends through those relationships. But I believe what's even more rich is that even as I'm, I'm counseling and I'm encouraging and I'm doing the text message and the Facebooks, the Instagrams, what I'm finding more than anything else is that in the upper left here, we, we see people who are saying, listen, my most richest friendships is between my husband or between my wife. We are the best of friends. Or from that parent child to adults, the adult parent, the adult child saying, my best friend right now is my son. My best friend is my daughter or my best friend is my mom. My best friend is my dad. What am I saying? Friendships transcends all other relationships. It all matters on how we live it out. Can somebody say, man, I think I can kind of hear you in the spirit saying, preach, PJ, and we just thank God because God knew we would need friends. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so here it is. We're talking about all the good that it, that it relates to friends, but then Solomon says, wait a minute, let's put some caution out there. And he says these words, a man of too many friends chosen uh, indiscriminately will be broken into pieces. He will be crushed. He will be cast down into ruins because he's got too many friends. And then he says this, but there is a true friend, a true and a loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother. Man, that, that, that's powerful. That's powerful. And I don't know if, if you're, you're saying, you know, I, I've got 227 friends on Facebook. Solomon just might be talking to you right now. You may be saying, hey, I've, I've got 379 friends on Twitter, come on, or, or on Instagram. And Solomon just may be speaking to you right now saying, you've got way too many friends. It's kind of funny, and, and I, I'm not going to even give a name, but I was talking to someone, and they were saying, hey, you know what? I've got 87 friends. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. But hey, what are you talking about? She said, 87 friends on Facebook. I said, well, do you know them? Do you, do you talk to them? And the response was like, no, no, no. You know, they're just, they're just friends that I get to tell what's going on in my life, and, and, and they share, and we take pictures and, and everything. Well, that's not a friend at all. And, and this is kind of what Solomon was speaking about. But I want you to know God wants us to have true friends. And so in the King James Version, the same chapter, the same verse, he says it like this, a man that hath friends, a man that hath true friends, a man who desireth friends must show himself how friendly, friendly. And so today I'm so excited. I, I've, been, I've been waiting for, for today to kind of talk about friends. Who are our friends? Who should be our friends? And what type of friend am I? Who are my friends? What type of friends are they? What type of friend am I? And what type of friends 
should I have? And so, you know, if anybody that knows me knows that I love acrostics. And so, of course, I took the word friendly to lay out what our battle rhythm or our algorithm would be, right, in explaining what a friend should really be. A friend should be friendly. And so we start with F. A friend should be fun. Yeah, I said it. A friend should be fun and a friend should be faithful. Well, and not only that, but should be friendly. But let's talk about fun. First of all, we, we should have friends that, that are able to lighten the load, lighten the atmosphere to bring joy and, and to excitement and, and encouragement, making it enriching. How many of you have friends that when they walk in the room, they just put a whole damper on the whole situation, on the whole environment, if you're willing to share that. And if you don't want to share it, yeah, just keep that one to yourself. But there are some friends, yeah, that would just lift it up. That you just feel better after being in the presence. They're fun. And not only that, they are faithful, meaning they're always there. They're always around. And, and, I, and I love this, but in the Bible, the Bible talks about a relationship between David and Jonathan. The Bible says this, when, when Jonathan, listen, had passed away and died, the testimony that David had was this. He says, I am distressed for you, my brother, Jonathan. He says these words, lock in on it, very pleasant have you been to me. Your love was more extraordinary, surpassing the love that a man would have for women. And so it was saying, listen, Ah, oh, you were pleasant to be around. I really enjoyed you. The love that we had was great. It was rich. And you were faithful. That's what God wants us to have, that type of relationship. Now, here comes the caution from Solomon. He says this, listen, listen, uh, don't make friends with hot-headed people. Don't make friends with people who get mad too quickly. Because if you hang around them too long, guess what happens? you start to be an angry person as well. Is there anyone out there that can say, well, PJ, I got a few friends that are hotheads and they get mad all the time. They say a whole bunch of craziness, but they're still my friends. All I'm saying is this is Solomon. This is not PJ. He's saying, watch out for it. Who's influencing who? What type of friends do you have? What type of friend ought you to be? And most importantly, God knew we would need them along the way. Well, we talked about fun and friendly. Let's go to R. R is real, ready, and resilient. Real, come on, ready and resilient. That almost sounds like a military thing. Real, ready, and resilient. Almost like the, the, the story of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were real, they were ready, and they were resilient. Don't you remember the story? King Nebuchadnezzar had built this golden image, this calf, and he told everybody in the area, he says, listen, when I sound the horn, I want you to bow down and worship this golden image. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, mm, that's just not gonna happen. The king got upset, brought him into his royal court and says, hey, I've heard that you're being defiant. And I need you, when I sound these horns, I want you to bow down and worship this image. But remember, they were real. Come on, they were ready and they were resilient. What am I saying? They didn't fake the funk. They didn't fake the funk. They were real all the way through to the core. And I love what they said. Look what they said. They said, we, I love it, I just love it. If we are thrown into the fiery furnace, the God whom what we serve is able to save us. But even if he doesn't and they close it out, we will never serve your gods. I'm talking about three friends that were real talking about, hey, you believe what I believe? Yes, I believe what you believe. You, you willing to go all the way down if we got to go down? Yes, I believe it. Are, are you telling me that we are ready to die if we have to die? Are you willing to put it on the line? And they're saying, yep, I'm really. And then when everything comes down, when the heat is on, come on, Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego. They didn't ghost anybody. They didn't flake out, if you will, but they stood together as that three-braided cord and saying, listen, we trust God. Do what you need to do with us, but we know our God will deliver, and even if he doesn't, we are still together. That's what God wants us to have. Friends that'll say, I'll go down with you in the flames. Come on, in the fire. I will be right there. Which begs the question, do you have any friends right now that have said, I'll be with you, I'll be there for you, and then soon as adversity comes, you don't see them, they just gone. You, you, you're trying to figure out, where did they go? What happened? What happened? because of the heat. Well, I'm just saying, God is saying, I have given you friends who are real, who are ready, and who are resilient. That's what God wants us to have. Well, we talked about F, fun and friendly. We've talked about R, real, ready, and resilient. Let's talk about I. I would fall into the category of friends who are intercessors who operate in integrity. Intercessors who operate in integrity. What am I saying? These are the type of friends that'll pray for you, but in the midst of praying for you, they will tell you just like it is. Back in the South, and this doesn't even sound right, but they will tell you just like it T-I is. And we know T-I's is just tears. I'm going to tell you like it tears, baby. I'm going to tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell you, but I'm still praying for you. I know you in mess right now, and I just want you to come out of it. We're going to pray together. That's the kind of friend God wants us to have who are intercessors and operate in integrity. Such a relationship was like that with Timothy, come on, and Paul. So Paul is, is working with Timothy as a mentor to a mentoree. And he says, Timothy, listen, I pray for you day and night. I'm always making mention of you in my prayers. I'm thanking God for you. And so there is the intercessor praying. Do we have friends that pray for us? Do we have friends who have told us we're praying for you? I'm praying for you. Well, this is what Paul is saying. He's like, listen, not only am I your mentor, but I am really your spiritual friend. I'm praying for you. And I also love you enough to tell you, you need to come up in some areas. So, so look at this. Verse six and seven says this. Look, I'm encouraging you, Timothy. Fan the flames of the spiritual gift that God has given you. You need to continue to pray. You need to continue to study your Bible. You need to continue to walk this thing out. Why? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, come on, or timidity, but of power, of love, and of self-discipline or sound mind. What, what is Paul saying? I prayed for you, and, and you still kind of walking around here like you scared. What I need you to do is pull up your big boy pants and walk on out in the name of the Lord. That's what God is calling us. Do you have any friends out there that is willing to call you on your, uh, yeah, on your mess? Come on, come on. And then say, I still love you. And we're going to pray this thing together. That's what God wants for us. That's what he had in mind. And I'm so thankful that God knew we would need friends. That's what God wants. And listen to this. I, I love the way Solomon laid it out. He says these words, faithful are the wounds of a friend. What is this talking about here? Sometimes a true friend won't just, well, I'm not going to tell them because I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to offend them. You know, I don't want them mad at me. But a true friend that loves and loves indeed is willing to tell you what you are wearing right now just doesn't look right. Come on, literally or spiritually. Come on, come on. I, I remember the story uh, of this one uh, young lady who, who was walking in a mall and a husband and a wife was, was watching her as she was walking through the mall and whatever she had on was ridiculous. It didn't match, the colors were off and I think it was a little bit too short. And so the wife says to the husband says, mm. And so the husband says, what? And she says, look over there. And she said it again, mm. And he says, what's wrong? And she, and she says, you see what she has on? And he says, yeah. 
And she says, you know why she's got that on? The husband says, no, why does she have it on? That was a great response, by the way. No, why does she have that on? And her response was, it's because she doesn't have any real friends. Because if she had real friends, her real friends would have told you, girl, you can't walk out of the house with what you got on right now. That's what God wants us to have. He wants us to have friends that will tell us when I've got mess on me. I'm talking about saying, you know what? What you got on ain't right. This is not you. This is not what God has for you. You look bad in it. This is not you at all. This is not appealing to you physically and spiritually. You need to take it off and put on what God has put in your heart what he has put in your life. You need to change your clothes and you need to get it right. Do it right in the name of Jesus. You know God's got better for you. You've got to understand I love you, but I love you enough to tell the truth. And then guess what they'll do? They'll pull it down, they'll touch it, they'll tuck it, and they'll go, now, now there is my friend. That's what God wants us to have to tell the truth, to love us, and to intercede every step of the way. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a hand of praise. I know you're in your kitchen, but you can give God a praise. That's what God wants us to have. Well, moving on. E is for equal or encouragers. Equal or encouragers. What is that saying? No matter, we'll talk about equals, no matter what I have, no matter what my title is, no matter how much money I have, no matter where I live, right? No matter what I drive, no matter what I do in the friendship relationship, we are equal. I'm not trying to one up you and you're not trying to one up me, but in this relationship, we are all, come on, we are all the same. And in encouragement, it is just there to encourage us every step of the way. I know I've been talking about Jonathan and David, but I want to talk about them one more time because I think it's so awesome. Look, look at this. Look at this. This is while Jonathan was alive and, and he and David to began to cultivate relationship. The Bible says that, that as they continued on, they began to cut covenant saying, hey, you know what? Uh, this is Jonathan saying, hey, I know I grew up in the palace. I know my father is the king, and I know you are a shepherd boy, and I know you belong to Jesse's limb, you know, loin, but, but listen, when it comes to our relationship, all of that goes away. Come on, come on, come on. I don't need you to be called to me, your royal highness. I am your friend. And look what the Bible says. Jonathan made it emphatically clear. The Bible says that he stripped off his robe, he took off his armor, he took his sword, he took his belt and all of it, and he gives it to David. Basically saying, we're on equal level here in this relationship. I don't want anything from you, come on, and you won't need anything from me, but guess what? If we both find ourselves in need, we will be able to operate together. That's what God, wants for us. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to have friends like Joshua and Caleb. You, you guys remember Joshua and Caleb. They, they were the spies that went out that Moses says, go out and spy out the land. It was 12 of them. 10 came back with a bad report saying, ooh, we'll never win this thing. We'll never win it. We just need to leave it. Let it go. Just let it go. Yeah, the grapes are big. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. But, you know, they, there's giants up there. We will never, ever make it. But then you see Joshua, come on, and Caleb. And, and they say, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. God has promised us this. We are going to be okay. We don't have to be afraid of anything. Why? Because we shall overtake them. We shall be delivered. We shall devour them. And not only that, he says, and the Lord is with us. These two operating as friends, encouraging not themselves, but everyone around. And that's what God wants. He wants us to have people in our corner that say, you know what? Don't allow this situation 
to cause you to shrink back. But I want you to square your shoulders and let's go ahead and fight this fight together. God is with us. Don't worry about what you don't have. I'm here with you. We can make it. You can do it. We're going to do it together. And more importantly, God is on our side. We need friends like that. Come on, somebody. We need friends just like that. Who are your friends out there? Come on, who are your friends out there that are there to encourage you every step of the way, no matter what's going on? They might know you broke. They may know your history. Come on, they may know your hangups, but they're still encouraging you every step of the way. Come on, who are your friends who know you have messed up, know you done messed up, know you said the wrong stuff, but they're still there with you, encouraging you, saying, come on, come on, you can do this, come on. Come on, I, I see what you don't see. Come on, God is for you. Come on, who can be against you? We're doing this together. It's going to be okay. God knew it. Come on, God knew we would need friends just like that. Friends, come on, friends, friends that see everything on the equal and friends that would be encouragers, friends that would be encouragers. I think we all need that. Well, we've talked about F, fun and friendly. We've talked about R, being real, resilient. Come on, ready. We talked about I. I is the intercessor operating in integrity. E is being equal and what? Being an encourager. And now N, N is talking about near. Come on, I'm going to be near and not here. Well, somebody said, that's an oxymoron, PJ. What are you talking about here? Near and not here. Well, if we look at the story of Elijah and Elisha, you see the near part in this whole story. See, Elisha was summoned by God to go to a faraway land in Bethel. And he tells Elisha, his understudy, he says, please just stay here. Don't, don't, don't follow me. Just, just stay here. God's got me on assignment. I've got to go to a faraway. I'll be back, but, but I need to go take care of God's business. Well, listen to Elisha's response to Elijah. He says, as the Lord lives and as you yourself are alive, I will not leave you. I believe God would want us to have friends that won't leave us, that, that they would be able to identify what God has done in the relationship. And no matter where we find ourselves going in this life, come on, on the high mountains, down in the valley, in the dark places that we don't have to go it alone. We need some friends like Elijah that will say, I'll go with you. Hey, no matter what, I'm with you. I I've got some friends right now that say, bro, no matter what, I am there with you. How many of you have friends? Like, that's what God wants us to have. I thank God for, our matter of fact, right now, why don't we just take a pause? Let's take a pause. Come on, let's take a pause and as we're surveying our friends. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for your friend. Lord, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for Doug. Come on, God. I thank you for Sam. I thank you for Jody. I thank you for Alan. I thank you for Tony. I thank you for Cleo. Lord, I thank you for Steph. Lord, I thank you for Jim. Come on, I thank you, Lord God, for all of my friends that you put in my life. That's what God wants us to have. Mark C, Lord, I, I thank you. Dean, Lord, I, I thank you. Come on, Lynette, God, I thank you. I thank you for my friends. Come on, Lord Jesus, Auntie Aaron, those are my friends. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for mom, Lord, and I thank you for my baby, Jules, Lord. Thank you for my friends, God. Hallelujah. God is worthy today. We need friends that will help us along the way, and that's what God knew. That's what he had in mind. Somebody say, keep preaching, PJ. You, you're getting off. No, I, we, we need friends like that. We need friends that'll help us. And then in times of trouble, come on, in times of trouble, when things are not going well, we need friends who, who would be willing to pick up a bat and swing it on your behalf. I know I said it. I meant it too. I meant it because, because I know Peter was such a man that didn't have a problem with fighting for his friends. Peter 
was there in the garden, come on, with Jesus when the centurion soldiers came to take him. And Peter was so mad, he said, come on, not here, not today. This won't happen. You won't put a hand on this one right here. This is my friend. You, you're not going to take him. You're not going to harm him. And the Bible says he pulled out his sword, come on, and he whacked off the ear, come on, of the servant of the high priest. That's the kind of friend that we need, you know, a friend that I can call. Come on, Pastor Sam, I can call him and say, bro, we need to go to Walmart. We need to find some bats. We need to start swinging it on some folks. Now, now, let me stop. I'm not serious. Well, yeah, I am serious. We need to go take some folks out because they don't know who we are. But the type of friends that we have we will take spiritual bats, Doug. Yep, that's right. We'll take a spiritual bat, Mark. Yep, that's right. See, we'll take those bats and we will go into battle and we will swing it, the sword of the spirit. Come on, Josh, we'll swing it in the name of the Lord. Come on, come on. We will tear down the enemy's camp and his kingdom and his snares. That's right, Jody, swinging it in Jesus' name. That's what God wants us to have. I need a friend that don't have a problem, you know, take, taking the case for me in Jesus' name. God, we did this thing together. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. That's what God wants. That's what he wants. I thank God for those kind of friends, God, that will stand up and support when times are needed, saying, I'm with you every step of the way and not here. It won't happen. It, it, this will not happen, not in my presence. That's what God wants us to have. And then D, D is this, tied to our destiny. Friends that are tied to our destiny. Friends that are tied to our destiny. I mean, we know these people are tied to our destiny. It would be just like the friend relationship of Esther and Mordecai. And you guys know that story, uh, Esther and, and the whole family they, they were about to be in an area of genocide, to be taken out by Haman. And, and I believe that Mordecai was like, wait a minute now, you're, you're, the, you're the queen, or you're about to be the queen, and, and you just need to go and speak on behalf of, of our whole nation here. He, he says, listen, if you remain silent, come on, the, the deliverance and the release, come on, our freedom, will be brought about from some other place. But listen, if you wait, your family will perish. They will die. They'll go away. And then Mordecai says these life-altering words. He says, and who knows that you have been appointed to this position for such a time as this. What am I saying? There are some people that are tied to your destiny, baby, tied to your destiny to speak life into your situation. Come on, to tell you, listen, you may not see this, but this is what God's got for you. Come on, God's going to change your language. God's going to give you new insight. You don't have to do it the way I do it. God has given you your own signature. Come on, don't try to write it like me. Go ahead and use your her other hand and write it the way God has given it to you because God's got a plan for your life. Come on, who's tied to your destiny? Come on, who's tied to your destiny? This one ought to be, be easy. Come on, because the ones that's tied to your destiny, they'll call you on it, but they'll be there to support you. Come on, Jules and PJ, tied to destiny. Mark and Steph, tied to destiny. Cammy and Doug, tied, come on, to destiny. Jim and Gabe, tied to destiny with Sandy. Come on, come on, who else is tied to destiny? Come on, come on, come on, Cleo, come on, Tony, Aaron, tied to destiny, Auntie Gloria and Claire, tied to destiny. This is what God will do. This is what God will do, and it's marvelous in our eyes. You've got to understand God knew what we would need in this time, and I thank God for friends, for friends connecting the dots in every way tied to destiny. That's what God 
wants us to have. I'm almost done here. L, L is loving and loyal. Loving and loyal. And you already know about Ruth and Naomi, but let me share with you, Ruth and Naomi got together by way of, of marriage. Ruth married a son of Naomi, and the Bible says that they all die. And, and Naomi was like, i got to leave this place. I've got to go back to my homeland. Things are going to be a whole lot better for me if I just go back home. And they had built such a strong and a solid relationship. It's right there before you. Ruth says, can I paraphrase it? Ruth says, you've been so good to me. You welcomed me into your family. My God, why would I leave my relationship with you? Where you go, I, I will go. Come on, where you stay, I will stay. Come on, your people, they'll be my people. But more importantly, your God will be my God. That's the type of relationships God is wanting to cultivate in this time, in this season right now, those that love us in spite of ourselves, but those who are loyal to the very end. I said loyal to the very end. Loyal to the very end. Listen to what she says. Where you die, come on, I will die. And where you are buried, I'm going to be buried there as well, meaning I'm not going anywhere. I'm loyal from beginning to the end, from the cradle, come on, to, well, from the cradle to the grave, if you will, I'm with you. I'm not going anywhere. We need some friends like that. Back in Texas, we would call you a ride or die. Come on, ride or die, friend. Somebody that's going to be with you every step of the way, through the good, through the bad, through the indifferent. And Ruth was that type of friend to Naomi, and then Naomi became that type of friend to Ruth, because if it wasn't for Naomi, there wouldn't be no Boaz. And if there wasn't no Boaz, that would still be bondage. That would still be bondage. But because of the relationship with Ruth, come on, and Naomi, and Naomi, and, and Ruth, they went from weaning, come on, in the field to owning the fields. That's what God does when you get linked up with your destiny. That's what, that's what happens when you link up with those that are praying for you. That's what happens when you link up with people that are real. Come on, somebody. That's what happens when you get linked up with those that are loyal despite what's going on. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. And then finally, in friendly. We said Elf is fun and friendly. It's faithful. R is real, ready, resilient. I is what intercessors and they operate in integrity. E is equal, and they are encouragers. N is near, but not right here. It just won't happen. D, they're tied to our destiny. L is loving and loyal, and Y is youthful. Now, I, I need a couple of minutes, because this youthful here transcends our age. Do you have those friends that all they want to do is sit on the couch? Come on sit at a desk, play video games. You know, all, all they want to do is watch TV from the time that the sun up to the time that it goes down. Do you have those friends who say, oh, I'm too tired. I, I don't want to go out. I'm too tired. I, I, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> now, y'all go ahead and go. I'll be here when you, when you get back. No, they, you know, I'm talking about friends that are, that are, that are just like, total opposite of youthful. They, they start thinking about all the bad before they think about the good. They, they say things like, well, this would be nice if we could do this, but, you know, I really want to do this, but, you know, I think it's a great idea, but, and, and, and so they're thinking from a place of, of excuse me, the, 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 the older, old mentality. I'm not talking about anybody being old. I'm just saying they've got set in their ways, right? They already made up their mind on what the story would be like, and they have conceded. Yeah, I said it. They have conceded to the inevitable. But I'm here to tell you, God is not calling us to be linked up to friends like that. He's calling us to be linked up to friends 
who are youthful. Come on, make it plain, PJ. I am, and I'm glad that you asked. I'm reminded of Joshua and Caleb. We talked about them just a few minutes ago. They were the ones that spied out the land. They were the ones that were still alive when God ushered the children of Israel from, from bondage into the promised land. Joshua is like, listen, life is good. We made it, Caleb. And, and Caleb was like, yeah, we did make it. And don't just give me any kind of land. Don't just give me any little area on this side. I, I want the same land that was promised to me more than 40 years ago. In fact, Joshua, I'm just as young today as I was back then. Look what the word says. He says, I am 85 years old. I'm an old man right now, but I am as strong now as I was when we started on the journey. And I can still travel. I can still fight. And I will fight. And I will possess this land. That's kind of friends that we need. Friends that are youthful. Come on, they're not limited by anything but they're trusting God. Come on, they're trusting God. They're looking at things on a spiritual level, understanding that God's got a great plan. They're not limited by their age. They're not limited by their money. They're not limited by their resources, but they're youthful in their thinking. They, they're just loving and they're ready to move out on what God has, not only for you, but for us together. Can we say amen? So there it is. F-R-I-E-N-D-L-Y. If you want friends, you got to make yourself friendly. So I got two questions. Do my friends meet this criteria? Are my friends friendly? The next question, what type of friend am I? And I believe that we all need to ask that question. I'm encouraging you this week, watch this message again and answer these two questions. What type of friends do I have? Come on. What type of friend should I be? Come on. What type of friend should I be pursuing? And with everything that's going on in our life, you may have summed up today, I don't have any friends that measure up with this category. I don't have any friends that, that, that's fun, friendly. I don't have any friends that are real, resilient, or red. I don't have any friends that are that are equal or encouragers. I don't have any friends that measure up to all of these categories. PJ, what a discouraging message. I can't believe you did that. And I'm here to tell you right now, and this is, man, this is what I've been waiting on. This is what I've been waiting on for 40 minutes. Here it is. We all have at least one friend that meets this criteria. We all have at least one that meets the criteria that falls in the category of friendly. I'm not gonna even wait on it. I'm gonna tell you that friend is Jesus Christ the Lord. He says, greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. He told the disciples and he's telling us today, no longer do I call you servants. I don't call you children. Come on, I don't call you followers, but I call you friends. Come on, I call you friends. He says, listen, in Romans, Paul got in it. He says, God did it way long ago in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What am I saying? He showed himself friendly from the very beginning. Before I was ushered onto the scene, Christ knew I was coming in. God loved me so much that Christ said, I'll be his friend. I'll die for him. I'll take the stripes on my back. I'll take the nails in my hand and my feet. I'll take the thorns on my head. I will allow the blood to come from my body because I am their friend. And so today, my brothers and sisters, come on, I want you to understand that we've got a friend in Jesus. The songwriter thought about it and he began to pick up the pen, put it on paper, and he said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything. Oh, I said everything to God in 
prayer. And so today we close it out. God has given us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. He doesn't want us to travel this road by ourselves. He has given us himself. He has given us his word. He has given us the giftings and the talents. And more importantly, thank you, Lord. He's given us a present friend. Come on. A friend that sticks closer than any brother. A friend that I can tell all of my issues to, knowing that it's not going anywhere. God sent his son to die that we might live. And because of that, I've got a friend in Jesus. See, you've got a friend in Jesus. Minister Holloway, you've got a friend in Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You've got a friend you've got a friend in Jesus. Canada, you've got a friend in Jesus. Panama, you've got a friend in Jesus. South Korea, you've got a friend in Jesus. Okinawa, you've got a friend in Jesus. The Philippines, you've got a friend in Jesus. Arkansas, Texas, Arizona, California, New York. Come on, Arizona, you know, you know the areas. You've got a friend in Jesus. And on these islands of Hawaii, he has not forgotten about us. We've got a friend. And our friend is Jesus Christ the Lord. We don't have to walk in bondage. We don't have to walk in pain. We don't have to walk in turmoil or frustration. Come on, thank you, Lord. But God says, accept my love offering. Accept my invite to friendship. Accept it. And when you accept it, you are able to walk in freedom. Yeah, you can walk in freedom. How, how do we do that? There may be someone here that's watching saying, you know, I've, I've never... I've never accepted Christ's friendship, but well, here it is. It's, it's just by acknowledging who you are. I am without the ultimate friend, Jesus Christ the Lord. I live my life the way that I've lived it, but I know that God has such a wonderful plan for me. He has such a wonderful journey for me, and he has said yes to you. Come on. Come on. I'm sending you a friend invite. I'm sending you a friend invite. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Every step. That's right, Rob and Laney. Every step of the way. So you'll be able to tell me things that you can't tell anybody else. And guess what? It won't be misinterpreted. It won't be misunderstood. But I got it. And I'll know what to do. And we'll be able to walk this journey together. If you want to, to accept Christ, as your ultimate friend, but more importantly, your Lord and your Savior. We're inviting you. As Hope Chapel, Pearl West, Freedom Point, we're inviting you to accept Christ today. And you say, okay, I want to do it, but what do I need to do? I need to put something on the chat. No, you do not. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Just pray it with me. I want the Lord in my life. Just just pray with me. Let, let's pray. Say, 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 Lord Jesus, I thank you for Christ. I thank you for, for him loving me enough to die that I might live. I thank you that I haven't lived a life uh, that, that's pleasing. But Father, even in the midst of that, you still love me. And so now I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept you as my friend, my 24-7, 365 day friend who will never leave my side to lead and to guide me in all truth. I ask that you forgive me for all that I've done wrong. And I pray and ask that you would lead me in a plain path. I give you thanks now in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Father, you, you heard the prayer of your, your children today. And not only your children, but your friends. And, Father, I pray that you would just continue to bless and encourage us. Father, continue to let us know in ways that cannot be denied that you are with us every step of the way. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. My goodness. My goodness. Listen, if you prayed that prayer today, I want you to know 
that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and the angels in heaven, the heavenly hosts are rejoicing over your decision, whether you was in your kitchen, your living room, in your car, in your office, Jesus Christ is Lord and he is well pleased on your decision today. Listen, I am Pastor James Thomas Montgomery, Senior Pastor of Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point, where it's all about Jesus and Jesus is all about freedom. God bless you. Rob, Laney, thank you. Thank you, PJ. What a powerful word. Wasn't that a powerful word, family? Um, for me personally, um, if you guys are like me, um, you stop pursuing friendships, you know, maybe because you've gotten hurt in the past. And um, it's just, it's so good to know that we can be a good friend to others, even if we feel like we don't have that because we have a friend in Jesus right. who is able right. to pour into us and we can That's then so pour into others. So that was so good. And um, thank you, PJ, for that because I needed that. It um, helped me see myself as a friend and how I want to be better as a friend. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And this is so encouraging, you know, not just to look for those kind of friends, but to be that, you know, that friend right. and, you know, you know, we encourage you guys, if you are looking for, you know, just kingdom friends, you know, just to get plugged in, plugged into small groups, you know, we have them throughout the week, you know, we encourage you guys, you know, to just, you know, plug yourself in, it's just so good, you know, we, we're just like a big family, just brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, and we, you know, we just want to love on you guys and just, you know, Amen. you know, just help you, you know, walk alongside you guys to just, you know, because life, you know, it gets crazy sometimes, but we have, a, you know, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, you know, justice, you know, and we just, um, yeah, just want to encourage you guys. Um, so uh, that just, uh, you know, concludes our um, our series, and, you know, we just want to invite you guys back to come back next week, Sunday. You know, same time, same place, we'll be here, you know, and, yeah, yep. we love you guys. Yes, we do. Have a blessed day, guys.